Okay, so this is a complete uh, new one for me. This is uh, the uh, larger rattlesnake that uh, was captured in the yard recently, and I've been holding over. I was going to release him this fall uh, when we cooled off a little so he could go back to wherever their hibernation den is. I've got five of them that I've been holding, but we got unexpectedly really cold and rainy and not really having much of a fall. Western diamondbacks, uh, any kind of rattlesnakes, they, you know, they're communal in their dens and everything, and they'll generally get along well in, in large groups. They've been together, uh, you know, I just was cohabitating them all together. Uh, and when I was cleaning their, uh, changing their straw yesterday, one of the smaller rattlesnakes was a little more panicky and high strung. And I should have probably just kind of, uh, left them alone for a little while, let them calm down or whatever. But whenever I was moving them into a different, um, a different, uh, tub, uh, so that I could clean out the straw as I as I put the big one in there. Um, I was lowering it down in there slowly, trying to do it slowly to give the other snakes an opportunity to know it's another rattlesnake incoming. Well, for whatever reason, that didn't work. It seemed to work better when I would just kind of drop them in there quickly on top of each other when I tried to lower this guy in there kind of slowly as so as not to startle the one who was a little panicked well it went ahead and bit this one anyway so a rattlesnake bit a rattlesnake and bit him right here in this area and I don't know if you can tell but I can tell there's been some uh uh, there's been some wetness around the wound and edema, and uh, I can't really take my hands off of him, at least not for very long. Um, don't want him to come out of that, that tube. But right in here in this area, you might be able to tell the difference where that is uh, more swollen. And uh, there was a little bit of wetness coming from the wound because... Um, uh, you know, the venom is hemolytic, which means it lyses or destroys, causes red blood cells to um, swell and explode. And that usually causes, you know, uh, leakage and bleeding around the, the wound area. And that's what I was seeing yesterday. And there's some edema. I thought it was maybe just a dry bite. Um, it looked like it was only one fang. It didn't look like there was probably going to be an envenomation because it only looked like one fang got him and that it wasn't really a full-on bite. Um, but apparently some venom was injected uh, into the other snake because because there is definitely some, uh, some edema there and leakage uh, from the uh, the bite wound so um there's not a whole lot i can do about that i mean he's still alive um the next day and still seems responsive and everything even though he's calm now this is after quite a bit of trying to wrangle him to get the vinyl tube on him and he was rattling and everything he's just calm right now now that he's confined in there uh but anyway I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, uh, dose him with steroids. You know, just uh, that's probably about all I can do because, um, uh, you know, not really sure that uh, mammal-derived uh, rattlesnake antivenin is going to actually work on a on a, an actual snake, you know, because because they use the rattlesnake uh, venom to inject it into sheep and horses, and then get the antibodies from them to that treats people and dogs and stuff like that. So uh, I don't really think that works in the reverse. That you could take the mammal derived uh, antibodies from like a, a, a sheep, 
and and put that back into a snake that's been envenomated. So uh, and the bad thing about this is this is right around in the in the heart region. Um, his heart's probably right in here somewhere. I haven't checked exactly, but this would be pretty close to the heart. That's usually about the first third of the uh, about third third of the way down on on the snake i'm just hoping he's going to be okay but uh he probably will be but i'm gonna i'm gonna give him a injection probably of dexamethasone and other supportive care um maybe electrolytes and stuff is probably about the only thing that that i could think to do for a rattlesnake who's been bitten by another rattlesnake a, a lot of people that say you know that well these venomous snakes are immune to their own venom or the, the venom of their own species, but there's not really a lot of science backing that up because it's not like this is observed all the time. In some cases, there have been, you know, cases of venomous snakes um, and, and um, reptile collections, you know, in zoos and stuff that have accidentally envenomated theirself and killed theirself. Um, uh, not really with rattlesnakes that, that I'm aware of. Um, he might pull through, but this is definitely um, evidence here that if, if a rattlesnake bites itself or is bitten by another snake, consuming prey that they have envenomated and then they eat it, that's different. Like you could eat something as long as you don't have a a bleeding ulcer or something in your stomach or elsewhere in your digestive tract. Well, really, it's going to be neutralized when it goes through the stomach anyway. Um, you could actually drink, you know, consume um, snake venom, at least rattlesnake venom, uh, you know, and it's going to go through your stomach. And, and as long as you don't have any ulcers or something in the stomach, um, that's not really going to cause you, you know, a complication. So it's not really a problem for the snake. It doesn't mean that the rattlesnake is immune to its own venom just because it can consume something that has been envenomated. Um, the real test of whether a rattlesnake is immune to rattlesnake venom is whenever it gets bitten and then it pretty much has no adverse response to it uh, or whatever. But I mean, I'm clearly showing here that th this snake did suffer an adverse reaction to suffering some symptoms from being bitten by another Western diamondback rattlesnake. So I'm not confident in saying that these snakes are, it, it may have some immunity because it looks like since he's not really appreciably worse than he was yesterday and not dead yet, that there is maybe some partial immunity, but Absolutely. Um, this proves to me that there is no 100% uh, immunity of a rattlesnake to uh, rattlesnake venom. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't have had a reaction like this. So it may be really hard for you guys to see, but um, but I can see and feel it. I can feel where the edema is. So... But anyway, just hope he's going to be okay. This is real effective in, in um, restraining venomous snakes. I'm really surprised that more people don't use this uh, technique. I've seen a lot of other people out there handling venomous snakes at zoos and uh, exotic veterinary clinics. Uh, people who do handle venomous snakes fairly often. I'm really, I'm really shocked that... I've, I've seen videos of them handling and examining, you know, and a lot of times they'll just sedate the animal or whatever and, and, uh, and examine them or treat them that way. And I'm just really shocked that more professionals out there just aren't using this method where you could safely restrain the venomous snake and not have to, uh, not have to, uh, sedate them. So anyway, we're going to get him taken care of. He's going to get too agitated. So I'm just showing you real quick. I gave him the injection of the steroid near where he was bitten. And I also had the thought I'm going to give him a little uh, vitamin K1 that I compounded into a syrup. 
and this is how I give that to uh, to a venomous snake. I just advance their head uh, farther down the tube where I can um, get access to their mouth, get them to open up the corner of their mouth, and then like here I'll insert uh, a uh, you know a steel feeding needle or a, a feeding tube. And I've had to do this whenever I've had to force feed them. So that's that's how we're going to give him the um, give him the uh, vitamin K1. He just got that uh, that feeding needle going into his throat right now. I gave him the K1, and the reason for that is because Western Diamondback rattlesnake venom is primarily, like I said before, hemolytic. Well, what it is, it's it's got um, anti-fibrin. Um, fibrinolytic um, components in it, which is basically the same thing. It, it prevents prevents your blood from being able to uh, to clot. So this is a, a ideal um, case for uh, for uh, you know a situation to give an animal um, vitamin K one. It's usually given you know like to if your dog eats uh, gets into rat poison. Or you know, uh, the wildlife an owl or something eats a, you know, a mouse or something that's that's been poisoned with a, an anticoagulant um, based, um, you know, uh, mouse poison, mouse or rat poison. Uh, but pretty much this is the same kind of case because the venom here is uh, is pretty much doing the same thing. Uh, and that's why it uh, it causes a lot of uh, bleeding will cause their prey when they bite them to basically hemorrhage internally and sort of bleed out through their organs, you know, internally and everything because of these uh, fibrinolytic uh, factors in the venom. So that's why we're, get, we're giving him um, K1. So right here, there where you can see where he's got blood leaking out from from the wound. And that's not where I gave him the uh, I gave him the dexamethasone injection right about in here, and so that's almost right on top of the spine, is uh, where he got the uh, where he got the fang wound, and there's some some blood blood leaking out of that, and that's why the blood looks kind of thin and watery. is uh that's that's typical for what it what it looks like when uh when you have blood leaking leaking out from uh hemolysis and stuff from uh from rattlesnake venom so it's it's doing to him pretty much the same thing that it would do to uh you know other animals or people if they were bitten you know maybe not at the same severity or the same rate um but but it is it is affecting him all right so our big rattlesnake here looks like he's doing good this is uh the day after i gave him the uh, steroid treatments and the vitamin k1 uh, orally and it looks like we don't have any more blood leakage and the uh edema it certainly doesn't appear to be like it worsened any. And this right in here was the 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 tip of the wand there. That's that's about where he was bitten over there. And I'm not seeing any any more fluid leakage there from the wound. Can see a little bit of dried blood there, but uh, so I think he's gonna be okay. It's questionable how much um, the steroid would have actually helped, you know, against the venom, but the, uh, the vitamin K1 certainly would have helped, uh, because the, the, the venom is mostly attacks the, uh, the blood. So the K1 would have helped with that, with clotting. So anyway, looks like he's going to be okay.